Good morning, guys. Um, I just had this kind of, like, tearful, out-of-body moment of realization, because I'm making chocolate chip banana pancakes right now, and, like, the thought of ever being able to eat that again um, used to be a complete fantasy in my head. So, um, I'm so, I'm just, like, so beyond grateful that I can do stuff like this again. Um, it's evidence of healing, and I wanted to make my video today explaining how I got here with my gut, because benzo belly, um, SSRI belly, whatever belly happened to me, um, it was this time last year I was pretty much housebound, um, with how bad it was, so I want to talk about what I did, and this is burning, so I'm gonna continue this in a minute. I forgot to grease the pan, so I'm still gonna eat the slop though. Were they restaurant quality pancakes? No. But they were really good because I made them and I ate them because I can eat them now. And that's just the that's just the, the tastiest part of all. Look, it's me and all of you. So, I am gonna divvy this one up into a bunch of chunks, because uh, it's gonna be long. There's a lot of information to cover. So, uh, yeah, you can scroll and see if there's a particular part that you're more interested in. Um, so the first thing, like, where I'm gonna start with this is my experience um, and what happened to me when I was on these drugs with my gut. So I've had gut issues on and off for pretty much my entire life, but they were nothing like what happened on the drugs and then after the drugs especially. Um, I went on an SSRI when I was 17, that was my first med, and my gut very slowly but steadily just kind of got worse and worse over the years. And you know, as I've talked about in my other videos, we're not taught or disclosed any of the risks that come with these drugs because not even, I mean, the doctors aren't even taught about what can happen with these drugs. Um, that's why it's so important to get the word out and start doing more research on this. But because of that, I never thought to attribute, like it never crossed my mind that my gut could be related to the meds I was taking every day. But in retrospect, um, it, it definitely was. So my gut was kind of steadily declining over the years that I was on meds until it got to a point where I had been on all kinds of stuff and played with the dosages and, and whatever, and I, I landed, for the last few years, I landed on a, an extremely high dose of Prozac, and I had been taking Clonopin for like three or four years. Um, so my gut was an absolute disaster by the end of it, it and it, it just... It, it kind of crossed this threshold and it got like unlivable after a certain amount of time. Um, I started going to doctors even though I didn't want to. Um, I didn't feel like there was much to be done because um, every time I ever saw a doctor, they just wanted to shove me on some pill and I would ask questions about, you know, why is this happening in the first place? And they would give me, you know, they wouldn't give me a straight answer and they would just tell me, this is how we treat it and kind of like, Stop asking questions, you annoying ass patient. <laughs> but you know, I always have had kind of a scientific mind and I, I wanted to know root causes. I didn't want to keep treating the, the leaves. I wanted to know what the, what the roots were. Um, so that's kind of where I, I began to part ways with, with um, you know, the Western medical approach to my gut. Because they, they wanted to put me on a, a daily steroid um, or they said I could try to manage it through diet. And I was diagnosed, the only diagnosis I ever got was lymphocytic colitis, which uh, now, years later that I've looked it up, it says online um, that one of the main causes can be certain types of medications, like SSRIs. So um, that's, that's kind of how it all began. But, you know, lymphocytic colitis and the symptoms of that, it didn't, even begin to touch what I was going through, especially once I started to come off the drugs. So things were really bad up until the end, but it wasn't until I 
at the instruction of my doctor, um, who told me I was on a small enough dose for it to be safe, I cold turkeyed my benzo. I cold turkeyed clonopin, which I would highly, highly, highly advise to never, ever do. Um, if you're thinking about doing that, don't, no matter what little baby dose you're on, don't, like, you gotta taper it as much as you possibly can. Um, I cold turkeyed it, and my gut, you might as well have thrown my actual intestines out the window. Like, it was like, I went from, in like nine months, I went from eating a somewhat normal diet and having problems, like, you know, having a lot of upset, but still being able to eat certain things, to, um, you know, one by one things just went, went off the list. I couldn't eat anything by the end of it. I, I, I couldn't eat literally anything without having pro uh, severe problems. But it was like, either you eat these five foods and live with the, the crippling symptoms that you're going to get from eating anything, or if you want to eat anything beyond that, you'll actually end up in the hospital or something. So um, it, was, it was extraordinarily painful. So the main two symptoms in the beginning were extreme bloating, like un unfathomable amounts of gas like I used to call myself the wind tunnel because <laughs> it was like just it was like wind coming through me like it was it was more gas than I thought could fit in my body um oh by the way this is going to be like a very uh TMI video I am not holding back <laughs> so yeah uh severe bloating and then diarrhea that was so excruciating like it felt like it felt like acid like pure corrosive acid was pouring out of me on a daily basis five times a day or more it was like and it was pure liquid and it was like it felt like it felt like it was burning me as it came out and it did burn me it literally caused like chemical burns this is so fucking gross i'm sorry um but i would get like really bad fissures um I'm saying all this to normalize it for people. Like, I'm, I'm being really vulnerable here. <laughs> but yeah, it was um, unbelievably painful. And it just, it hurt so bad. Like, my gut just felt like it was twisted up and burning and aching and stinging, like, all, all day at times. Um, and even sometimes drinking water would piss it off. Like, I just couldn't win. It was so bad. And for me, I was, like, extremely OCD, terrified about... I had really bad skin going through all of this because your gut is super connected to your skin. And, um, and I mean, like, my skin's doing great now, just to give anybody hope if, if they're going through that, too. Um, but it was... It was so bad, and then, like, and then I learned about, like, the gut-skin connection, and I started, like, f fucking freaking myself out about, like, oh my god, my gut's never gonna get better, which means my skin's gonna be like this, which means my gut, which means my skin, like, it was, like, this vicious cycle, and I was terrified. And so, it got so bad, like, it got to a point where I, I had, I was losing weight really rapidly, I looked really sick, I was, like, covered in acne, um, I, I looked gaunt, like, I, I'm 6'3", and I was, at at the lowest point of this, I was like 130 or 135 pounds. I looked like a skeleton. And I'm about 145 to 150 now, um, which is much better. But I, I looked really ill. And I I got to a point where I was in so much pain all the time, I, I, I was really scared. Um, I thought, you know, I thought I was going to have to be hospitalized or you know, go on, like, a f special feeding program or something to get nutrition, because I was so, so sick, um, and I was really weak and tired all the time, I couldn't function well, because, you know, when your body's not absorbing nutrition, like, you're, you're fucked, and so I sought out the help of a, um, uh, what do you call it, a functional medicine doctor, and she ran some tests, and, uh, listened to my symptoms, and, determined that I had something called SIBO, uh, S-I-B-O, which stands for Small Intestinal Bacteria Overgrowth. I'm going to get into that a lot more um, in a little bit, but 
that's what I got diagnosed with. So this brings us to part two, which is basically going to be what I've learned in a really simplified way about the basics of the way the gut functions. And God, these chickens. Um, and disclaimer, as I've said in many, many other videos and comments, um, I am not a medical professional and I do not claim to be one and I'm not telling anybody what to do. Um, so this is just what I've learned from doing my own research. You should research it for yourself before you make any decisions. Um, and you should see a, hmm, I guess I have to say you should see a doctor. Um, but I always advocate for at least a functional medicine doctor, if not like a full on naturopath. So at a really basic level, what I've learned about the way that the gut functions is that it's a chain of events. You put food in your mouth and it goes downstream and it comes out of your butt. And <laughs> groundbreaking, I know. But every single part of your digestive tract has a unique role in breaking down and absorbing your nutrition into your body. So it starts with your mouth and your saliva goes to work breaking certain parts down and then it goes down your esophagus into your stomach. The stomach acid starts going to work breaking stuff down. It goes down into your small intestine, which your pancreas and your liver are attached to. They secrete their juices into your small intestine. Further breakage, downage happens in there. It moves downstream and in your small intestine, like that's all lined with these little tiny, it almost looks like, um, like uh, if you have like a terry cloth towel, like the little, all the little threads, or like uh, if you turn like a starfish upside down, you see all those little feet. Um, that's kind of like what your, the lining of your small intestine looks like. It's all these little, I think they're called villi or villi or whatever. Um, and uh, it's to increase the surface area. Each one, you know, can absorb all kinds of nutrients through it. Um, I don't know why I'm including that, but uh, your small intestine, you know, is responsible for a lot of absorption and then the food moves through there, lots of absorbing happens, and then it goes down into your colon, which is where the majority of your microbiome is, which is all of the little microorganisms that keep you healthy, um, bacteria, fungi, viruses, all kinds of stuff. Um, and then I don't, I'm not so clear on what happens in there, but I know there's a lot of water absorption in the colon, and then it moves downstream and you poop. And um, that's kind of the basics, a really, really elementary way of, I have a point. <laughs> so the reason I'm including all of this is because I want to explain what I understood about my diagnosis, which is SIBO, which is not an uncommon diagnosis for people in psych med withdrawal to get. Um, in a healthy body, the majority, like I said, your most of your microorganisms, your microbiome is supposed to be in your colon, which is your large intestine, which is the last major organ in the chain. Um, the, the one before that is your small intestine, which has all that lining I talked about with all the little fingers. Um, that is not supposed to have a ton of bacteria in it. It's supposed to be kind of, there's supposed to be some, uh, but it's supposed to be a lot clearer um, on the walls of your small intestine than it would be in your colon. Um, because so much absorption happens in the small intestine. And basically what happens with SIBO, it stands for small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And that means that the lining of your small intestine, which is, you know, your food is like, like say this is the inside of your body and this is your small intestine lining and here's your food in here. Like your food is supposed to get absorbed once it's been broken down by all the juices, it's supposed to get absorbed through that lining and into your bloodstream to go be taken wherever it needs to in the body. But when this lining of your small intestine is covered in, you know, pathogenic or sometimes not even pathogenic um, bacteria or fungus or what, whatever it is, um, your body is now competing with all of that for nutrition because the food has to pass through all of those organisms first and then get into your bloodstream. And so what can happen is that's called SIBO. So you have this overgrowth of stuff that's 
glued basically to the wall of your small intestine and it gets first dibs on all the nutrition that you have. And then whatever's left goes into your bloodstream along with all of the waste secreted by these microorganisms, um, which causes innumerable health problems. You know, there's a lot of research being done that's showing that SIBO is responsible for all kinds of diseases because of the deficiencies it causes and also because of the waste that is secreted directly into your bloodstream by these microorganisms. So it's a, it's a, it's a double whammy. It's really fucked up and it's a really hard, vicious cycle to break or so I thought. So, so many of the symptoms that I was dealing with, um, especially the gut ones were, were all symptoms of SIBO. And I started to get really in my head uh, throughout my withdrawal journey about like, what if, what if this isn't all withdrawal? What if some of it is SIBO and I, I should be treating the SIBO? But the problem is, is that it's this really vicious cycle, like I said, because I can't tell you how many people told me that I would never heal my gut if I was stressed, <laughs> if I couldn't break my chronic stress cycle, that I would never be able to heal my gut because the gut gets impaired by stress and then it furthers the SIBO and allows it to grow and all of this stuff and, and how stress screws up the motility of your gut, which is basically like the flow of everything through your gut and, and allows it to like stay for longer than it should. I don't know if you can hear all the little chicks in the backyard, but they're really cute. Um, anyway, it, it became this very scary loop of, I was like, okay, cool. I'm not going to be able to heal my gut because I'm so stressed out all the time, but that was completely out of my control because of, you know, the, the nature of the injury is, you know, a, a, there's so much overwhelming fear all of the time, uh, terror, akathisia, like it's, it's completely out of our control. So I was like, cool. So I can't not be stressed out, which means my gut's going to be fucked up forever, which means my skin's going to be fucked up forever, which is going to stress me out even more. And like, it, I was like, oh my God, I'm like, I'm in hell and I can't get out. And you can, um, please just know that. So throughout my journey, I treated SIBO five times. I treated SIBO five separate times, two with Western approaches with antibiotics and all kinds of crap like that and then three with natural holistic approaches, uh, herbal antibiotics, uh, d special diets, etc. I, I could not get rid of it. Um, it kept coming back and I completely lost hope that I would ever be able to eat normally ever again. Um, I then you know, became very determined to manage my symptoms as best as possible through diet. And I was kind of stuck in this permanence mentality, which is totally normal and it's a symptom. Um, but you know, your brain kind of, when you're in this, it's so traumatic, it, it, it tries to cope with the idea of all of it being permanent. And, and, uh, which in turn just terrifies many of us. Um, so I, you know, I was kind of staring down the barrel of like, I'm going to have to eat a really hyper specific diet for the rest of my life and trying to cope with that. And I, uh, I, I determined pretty early on that it seemed to be carbs that were absolutely destroying me. So I started to super, super limit carbs, any kind of carbs until I got to a point where I was fully keto. And I figured it was like a, you know, a killing two birds with one stone kind of thing, because so many people had told me that they had done keto for, um, akathisia. So I figured, okay, well, I guess maybe it'll help my gut and it'll help my ACA. So, um, I went full keto. I did keto for a year and a half. Um, I hated it. I was miserable. It made my akathisia worse. Um, cause keto, it gives you so much energy. And when you're, you know, in a state of akathisia, um, if you have like a hyper excited type of injury, like I've noticed there seem to be two different, not two, but like 
there seem to be different general types of experiences. Like I've talked to a lot of people who have, you know, the terror anxiety type of injury or the like really depressive flat anhedonic type of injury. And sometimes we alternate between them. Um, but most of my journey has been the, the terror gas pedal nervous system is on 10 all the fucking time, no matter what. Um, and to, you know, to then add ketones to the mix and like be like adding a bunch of energy to that type of body. Like it was, it, it made me feel so much worse, but I, I didn't know what to do because I, 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 it did help my gut. Like, Keto helped my gut a lot. Not eating carbs made me able to function at a basic level, you know? And so I, I felt like it was worth it. And my symptoms were so bad with or without keto, like my neurological symptoms. I, I just bit the bullet and did it. And I did it for a year and a half. And the reason that keto works so well for the symptoms is because you're starving the bacteria, you're semi-starving the bacteria of their favorite food source, which is carbs. So these bacteria, like carbohydrates are bacteria's best friend because it's, it's sugar. It just breaks right down into sugar and it feeds the infection and allows it to keep causing you symptoms. So when you starve them, at least a little, um, it can go into remission slightly. And that's what happened for me. And then Sadly, I had hoped that I had starved them out enough to maybe get rid of at least most of it. But sadly, um, it seemed to have just gone dormant because um, the second, literally within two or three days of restarting carbs and reintroducing some carbs into my diet because I missed them so much and I craved them ravenously the entire time I was on keto. Um, I finally caved in and ate some so my body wanted carbs so bad and all of my symptoms went back to as severe as ever within a few days and I really really lost my shit at that point and that was the beginning of last year and I was not willing to give up carbs uh, I, I was sick of eating hyper specific for no reward I was I was tired of it. I was burnt out. I was, I, I, I couldn't keep living that restrictive of a lifestyle and going and feeling like such an outsider everywhere I went, everything I did, people wanted to eat out all the time. And like, you know, at work being the only one who brought my lunch from home while everyone else ate the fucking catering food. And like, I couldn't do it anymore. I was, I, I got burnt out and I, I didn't stop, even though it made me worse. I didn't want to stop eating carbs. And I, you know, and I just kept thinking like there was a time in my life a few years ago where I could eat all the carbs in town and my problem, like I didn't have any problem with them. This is not normal. And so I started to, I dove back into my, my research, um, which I'm sure many people can relate to doing thousands of hours of research during this type of injury, because you're just trying to find an answer. And um, I finally, by the grace of God, I found a piece of information that I had not ever come across before um, about SIBO. And it was specifically when I was searching for why do some people have chronically recurring SIBO? Because I had treated it five times. And um, I found just this one kind of hidden article um, talking about the relationship between SIBO and biofilm. And uh, that brings me into but what is biofilm? So all living things in the world want to perpetuate life. Like it's, it's programmed into all of us, um, into all living beings to survive and to perpetuate the population. Um, and this does not spare bacteria. Um, bacteria want to stay alive. They, they want to thrive. They want to multiply and create colonies and stay alive. So SIBO is an infection of bacteria. That bacteria does not want to get killed. Um, and so what happens is, what can happen is, and this is not just SIBO, it has like biofilms have 
roles in all kinds of other chronic diseases. But these bacteria, when you repeatedly try to kill them, and this is like where antibiotic resistance, um, this is part of how this happens. Um, when you repeatedly are trying to kill off this infection, if you leave a little bit, le if a little bit survives, basically it goes, oh shit, I'm under attack. And it starts to manufacture a way to stay alive. And that's biofilm. So basically, the bacteria build this matrix of like, I don't remember exactly what it's made of, but it's like a glue. It, 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 it's kind of like, it looks like a filmy glue. And it's a, the, the, the bacteria start to create this glue-like substance that can trap all kinds of things like heavy metals is a big one um, and other things toxins um, uh, that are moving through you and should normally pass through you, but it can start to basically build like a scaffolding around itself um, of all of this shit for your body. Um, and it, it, it creates like a, a little protective layer to hide underneath. So what happens is like, this is the lining of your intestine. This is the inside of your, let's say your bloodstream or whatever, your body. And this is like inside of your intestine, like like we said before. So basically all the bacteria are, are all along the wall and it secretes this like little glue matrix that then it can hide inside of. And so what happens when you hit that with antibiotics or any kind of treatment is you're basically hitting this, you're hitting the outside of the biofilm and whatever organisms are in the outer layer, but anything that's in here can just hide and avoid the antibiotics. And, and then that's why like you'll get a little bit of relief because they're all hiding in there and you've killed off the top layer. And then, you know, a few days or weeks go by and, and then they all go, all right, party time. They come out of the glue and they start feeding again. Or at least this is the way that this was all described to me through the protocol that I finally found, which I'm going to explain in detail. Um, so that's, that seemed to be this golden ticket that I had not discovered before. Like, oh my God, this is the, the little missing link that explains everything. And I started looking at, you know, how biofilm affects the body and how SIBO chronically affects the body. And all of these symptoms I was having were all leading back, all roads were leading back to this. And I was like, holy shit, like, I've cracked the code. I've got to do something. So um, I found this protocol. I started looking up, like, how to eradicate biofilm um, in the gut. And I found this protocol called Restore 3. And honestly, these people should sponsor me, um, but I just want this information out there regardless of if they ever do, because um, it's so important and it turned my life around. So this is Restore 3. It's by a company called Native Formulas. And um, they the really cool thing about this protocol is that it comes with a huge audiobook that basically describes everything I've just described, but in more detail, and explains every step of the process and how to do it. So it kind of comes with your own little coach. Um, if you are able to, I would highly recommend doing this under the supervision of like a naturopath or, a, you know, like a holistic wellness coach, somebody that you can check in with and, you know, adjust things if you need to. Um, I had done so much research and worked with so many coaches at this point that I kind of tweaked the protocol to fit my own needs. And um, I've always been a little bit experimental with my, with my body and uh, health approach, like approaches to healing myself. So I was, you know, prepared for the ride. Um, but yeah, I would recommend working with someone. But basically, the way that the protocol works is the main ingredient in this is an extremely high dose of digestive enzymes that, and I know if, you, like, if you're like me, you hear that and you go, I've tried fucking digestive enzymes, obviously. Like, I was like, girl, that's not going to work. But um, the difference is that 
basically what happens with biofilms or part of what happens is that your body can only manufacture your pancreas can only manufacture so many enzymes at a time it's a lot of work to to create them so if you are blasting through all of those enzymes with your digestion there's not enough to break down the biofilm because that's it's really the only thing that can break down biofilm really chew it up and break it down other than probiotics is enzymes and so what can happen is then your body gets into this vicious cycle of like i can't produce enough enzymes to break this down so then it just stays and so what this is doing is you take the enzymes you take this on an empty stomach and that's the difference between t this and taking like a digestive enzyme because you don't take it with your food because if you take it with food it's going to go to work on your food it's not going to go to work on the biofilm so what i did i'll just give you kind of like a little synopsis of how i tweaked the protocol exactly what i did because i what they say in the protocol that it, it like the the ebook that this comes with um i didn't do exactly that i i edited it a little bit so what i did was i would take this first thing in the morning when i woke up i kept it by my bed you can over time up the amount i never did that i stayed at two capsules uh first thing in the morning and i didn't do it multiple times a day like it says you can because it was too much for me um so i wake up i would wake up i took these on an empty stomach i waited a full hour um yeah i waited a full hour and in the very beginning for the first few weeks of the protocol i added in an herbal antibiotic and so after that hour was done, I would then take the herbal antibiotic. I took, sorry, Jesus, the banana pancakes are making a cameo. Um, so I would wait a full hour, kind of let this go to work on like chewing up the biofilm and opening it up and exposing what's inside. And then I would take my herbal antibiotic to blast whatever was inside of the biofilm that had just been freshly exposed. I took one called Biocytin. Um, sorry, I don't have that to hold up. Um, but it's called Biocytin, B-I-O-C-I-D-I-N. And it's a very potent blend of all kinds of different herbal antibiotics, um, but all natural stuff. And just because something is natural doesn't mean it can't hurt you. But my philosophy and my, my lived experience is, it seems like if I have a bad reaction to a natural supplement, it lasts at most a couple days or a week or two, and then it goes away. Unlike with pharmaceutical drugs, which can fuck you for years, <laughs> as we've all learned. So um, that's what I did, and then I would let the herbal antibiotics sit for a while, like maybe like half an hour to an hour if I had time. I realized that this is a lot of time in the morning, and I'll, you know, sometimes you're going to work or you have something going on, you don't have time for all this, but I've been living a pretty isolated lifestyle <laughs> while I was doing this anyway. I wasn't, you know, physically able to work much and um, I had a lot of time on my hands, so this is how I did it. Um, and then after, you know, that hour and a half or so was complete, I'd then eat my first meal of the day. Um, I'd like to give a fair warning uh, about doing this protocol. I was not ready to do this protocol until uh, two and a half years in, almost, more, maybe more, uh, into my journey. If you are at the beginning of your journey, um, this, can, this can be far, far, far too hard on you. You have to, I, I'm not going to say you, I had to get some healing under my belt with the rest of my symptoms before I could even think about doing this. And that's the sad truth, but it's true. And I say that because I don't want, I don't want to tell you guys that this is a magic fix and then have you jump right into it when you're, when you're not ready for it and f completely, you know, make everything 10 times worse. Because the fact is, I can't tell if it made me way worse to do this protocol. I don't know if it amplified my symptoms a lot because they were already so bad before I went on it. Like my inner ACA 
not even inner, my akathisia, the pacing, the inner akathisia, the pots, the just the hypersensitivity, the brain fog, the terror, the mood swings, all of it, it was so bad um, before and during the protocol. Like, I don't really know if it, it affected all of that stuff. But what I can definitely say is that it did not make any of that better. Um, it really helped my gut. Um, and, and a few other symptoms related to my gut. It really helped my gut, my skin, and the burning joints. Which is like a major symptom of um, a biofilm infection. Um, but it's also a major symptom of withdrawal. So who knows? But I think that for me was related to the SIBO. So I just want to set realistic expectations. This really helped my gut. It could very well turn your symptoms from, you know, wherever they're at up a hundred notches. I don't know. You like, unfortunately, if you want to try this, you, you're going to have to see for yourself. Um, and fair warning, it could make it worse. I don't know. Um, I was in such bad shape and I had a lot of support. Um, that I was willing to try and I was willing to white knuckle how bad everything got. It made all my gut symptoms way worse in the beginning. It made a lot of my withdrawal symptoms noticeably more intense, especially in the beginning. But, um, I just felt like I had to do something cause my gut was destroying me. So I did the protocol for seven months. It recommends in the guide that it comes with to do it for like four to six, I think. I did it for seven because I wanted to be really thorough and really hit it hard while I was hitting it. Um, and that brings me to where is my life now. Um, my life is night and day from where it was last year. Um, truly. The amount of times I have wept tears of joy into a bowl of pasta <laughs> since this happened. Um, like I said in my last video, it has going through this has installed a sense of gratitude. I don't think I would have gotten any other way. I will never take something like eating what I want to eat for granted ever again. And that's one of the beautiful things that comes through this when you make it through it is that, I mean, the gratitude is just, it's like, I don't know, it's like touching the sky. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, every time I eat there's this little sense in the background of like, this is so great. <laughs> Thank you for, for letting me eat this meal. Um, so that's a really beautiful thing. Um, I eat pretty much whatever I want now, which is so crazy. <laughs> I, I didn't think I'd ever be able to eat gluten or dairy or, uh, carbs of any kind ever again. Um, so that's been a really magical experience. I'm deeply, deeply grateful for it. I still limit what uh, the stuff that I eat that's, you know, objectively not great for anybody. Like banana pancakes are a little treat. Um, or, you know, making pasta is like a once every one to two weeks kind of occasion for me. Just because I, I do believe in holistic wellness and you know, I think it's important to really limit these kinds of things. Um, I still, for the most part, try to eat really paleo, um, natural ingredients, organic as much as possible, lots of greens, lots of uh, high quality meat and um, gluten free carbs like, you know, organic rice or, you know, grains aren't great in general, but that kind of stuff, just as paleo and organic as possible, basically. But yeah, having the freedom to be able to treat myself at a restaurant or something is, is a really beautiful thing. And oh my god, hold on. I can't believe I forgot to mention this. This is like one of the biggest pieces of the of the whole pie for me. Um, this. Uh, peppermint gels, game changer. I started taking these before I even took the protocol. Um, and I take them before most of my meals. Um, if I'm eating something that I'm like confident won't bother me, then I won't. But um, 
for a long time I took these literally before I ate anything, even a snack. Um, so these are by now supplements. They're peppermint gels and they have uh, peppermint, ginger, and fennel oil in them. And the combination of those three things is just extremely soothing to your GI tract. Um, they help humongously uh, with with and a lot of different GI symptoms. Um, so, and they're cheap. This whole bottle, this is 90 of them for, I think it was 10 bucks. I get it on Amazon. I've gone through a lot of these bottles. Um, but, you know, that's like, you take, eat three meals a day, it's 10 bucks a month. It's just, there's 90 of them. So, um, very worth it. I carry them, I have them in my bag. I have them in, in the house, I have them in the car, I keep them, there's one, there's a little uh, pillbox of them in my hiking backpack, <laughs> I keep them everywhere, because um, they help so much, so that's another big piece of the pie, um, important part of how I've managed all of this, um, hugely, hugely helpful. So yeah, that's kind of a, I know it's a lot of information, um, that's a very like comprehensive overview of my journey through Benzo Belly. Um, it's so much better now. And again, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Um, there's a lot of things about this injury that I believe just, just come with time. Um, I don't believe there is really anything that fast forwards the healing on things like akathisia or POTS, or like so many of the withdrawal symptoms, it's a brain injury and it takes a long time to heal. Um, this particular area, I want to be really clear, when it comes to the gut, I did not personally wait for healing. Um, I've heard of people waiting for healing and I've heard that people's guts do heal on their own in time. I was not patient enough to allow my own gut stuff to go on any further than it, it than it had and so that's my experience your experience could be totally different this this might not work for everybody but this is what worked for me and so you gotta weigh the risks for yourself again I, it's so important i'm gonna say it five times you know really be prepared I'm not telling you to jump right on this protocol. Be careful, do your research, Des talk to people about it, decide if this is right for you. I just wanted to put the information out because it completely changed a huge, huge part of my life. Um, and I am so grateful for that. So if it can help anybody else, that's the, that's the goal. Um, as always, I'm sending all of you so much love. Um, you know, I'm still in the, I'm very much so still in the healing process myself. My nervous system feels crazy uh, a lot of the time, but, you know, I am slowly but surely seeing improvements and it, it does get better. So please just keep going. It's taken so long for me and I'm glad that I, I haven't given up. So um, I love you guys and be well.